episode 57 of the Podcraft Beer Show for Monday, September 20th, 2021. In today's show, Chris, Steve, Josh, and Jacob try five craft beers, a Czech Pilsner, a White Stout, and three different IPAs. This is the Podcraft Beer Show. I'm your host, Chris. We're back with special guest hosts, Josh and Jake. Jen. Hello. How you guys doing? We got tech guy, Steve. Charlie's <laughs> still missing in action. So today we got, uh, we got a couple of beers, uh, guys. We got a couple of beers from North Park, a couple of beers from uh, Green Cheek, and uh, Jake brought us a beer from Stone Cloud. Uh, Oklahoma City. There we Oklahoma, are. Oklahoma, right in the heart of Oklahoma City. So still in the middle of nowhere. Still in the middle of nowhere, yep. I was up at a, a wedding in Edmond, which is a suburb a little bit north, and was looking for places along Route 66 to find good beer. This was one of my stops. Right. So I'll give a little profile of this beer. It's a, uh, it's a Pilsen, and it's brewed in the traditional Pilsen, uh, Pilsner way. Uh, hey, Charlie. Oh. What's going on? We just started. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Can you hear us? Rudely interrupted. <laughs> so Charlie, I gotta turn up the volume a little bit. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna work. I got you know what? I got you on the car. That's why. Yeah, that's fine. I, I mean, it. you're coming in fine for the podcast, but you you can't hear us very well, probably. I can hear you fine. So you oh. can. Okay. Can you hear us? Yeah, I'm thinking I can put on my uh, my headphones if you want. Huh? You can, we can hear you. Is, is this our right, first one. remote? Remote. Oh, yes. All right. Well, Charlie, we're going to drink the beer and tell you about it then. All right. I've already drank beer today, so I'm ahead of you. Hey, so, uh, Charlie, have you had any uh, decent beers on your uh, recently? Yeah, I had some. Did he just hang up on us? Yeah. He hang up on us. Still connected. Still connected. Dead zone. So, All right. It's like that might not work. Yeah. <laughs> well, he didn't like us that much anyways. Let's right. hit it. Let's, right. uh, let's pop So that. we got Classique. Uh, it's built up, brewed after the original Pilsen brew, which uh, I, I got a little story about that. Oh, that is crispy. Mm, love that Pilsner smell. Guys, I don't know if you're going to get any of this. I might, I might just pour it all myself. So, uh, I've actually had the privilege of being in the Czech, Pilsen Czech Republic a couple summers ago and actually toured the original brewery. Mm. So, let's see how well this uh, stacks up. I thought this was phenomenal. Uh, Jake had, I, I, ha I had this earlier in uh, the summer, right, when you got back. Right. That's delicious. I love, it. you know what I, I like about it? And, it, and it, they did... Just by looking at it, you can tell it's it's not thinly filtered like we do here in the states with a pilsner. Yeah, it's a little hazy, which is the traditional styles. Yeah, um, when you go there, it's uh, it's open fermented in the barrels in a cave, which is pretty awesome. When it's a hundred degrees outside and you walk under these barrel caves where they used to drop ice into the into the cave to cool it down. Uh, but it's it's actually right up there with. Uh, I mean, that's an awesome. The pilsner. original, like that's uh, phenomenal. Yep, I I'm guessing they use probably Saz uh, hops in it. It, it. It's got a very traditional hop taste. Yeah, it says they uh, they're, they're right up on it. Is we base this recipe on the classic Bohemian pilsner styles you'd find in the Czech Republic. Expect a more pronounced bitterness with less fruity and more earthy herbal op, herbal op. Uh, I don't hop profile. I don't see a huge difference in it. It's just super easy to drink. Way, way yeah. Easy. yeah, I love the can art of it. Similar to what we saw, we talked about BBR. You know, with the the burning beer take on the PBR. Yep. And yeah. this looks just like the classic. It does. Yeah, it looks like uh, Urquell. Definitely not imported, but still tastes pretty great. I, I would agree with that. That's, That's a good enough. start for the day. Wow. That sure is. Like, <laughs> Jake needs to head back out there. <laughs> it's a long drive for 
Yeah, I don't. Uh, four pack or four pack. Yeah, I might have to pick up two four packs. Yeah, that was a fun. We went on the tour, and the only tour they had available when we stopped by was in German. I don't speak German, but you know, we're touring, and the ladies like most of the people in the crowd that we were with was all were all English speakers, but the English tour was booked, so it was like, oh, take the German. I just want to see everything, right? Right. right. So they're like going through, and you know. Being a brew, brew, like somebody who knows brewery in Dunbury, I could have given the tour. I knew everything they were showing us and stuff. But that the facility is, it was awesome. Like, yeah, because they went they went from the original way of doing it to mm. how they do it now. Um, and so the open fermentation. The great thing there is, if you ever get to Pilsen, Czech Republic, you have to stop at this place because they still make small batches of the beer in the original recipe. Mm. Like the same Ooh. techniques, same process, same, you know. That's e- fascinating. E- everything's the same. And they pour it right out of the barrel. Like they got a little spigot on the barrel, and at the end of the tour, they, you know, they, they pour you a little pint glass. Right. And then the guy leaves, and so you go, well, I went. Back a little. I, w- I hung back a little and filled <laughs> myself some more in the pint glass. Because it was that delicious. And I'm like, hey, can you pour one for my kids, too? Like, yeah, right, right, I'll right. I'll drink theirs as well. <laughs> <laughs> no whistle, no foul. Don't ask. You're not going to get it. Hey. That, Try it. You know, foreign country, you know, you don't know what the drink is. I mean, I think, you're, there. I think it's pretty young, though. Is it beer, like, 16? And Some of your kids No, 16, I think but... it's 14. Is it? In Germany. Yeah. If I recall correctly. Um, my 13-year-old's kind of like, hmm, I'm going to be 14 next year, Dad. Yeah. What what is the ABV that allows them to do that? I think it's like four point two. It's like four point two, four point eight, somewhere. In, it's under five. This one is. This one comes in at five point two. Oh so yeah, so here it is. Yeah, minors fourteen uh, years and older may drink undistilled alcoholic beverages such as wine or beer when accompanied by a custodial parent. Minors sixteen years of age and older may drink undistilled uh, without accompaniment. Yeah, and, and then eighteen for like uh, distilled. distilled, right? Well, it, it, yeah. and having a friend that's from Germany, he's yeah. like nobody checks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's well, like you're walking and you can order yeah, it. Yeah. We're gonna give it to you. Yeah. yeah. So when I was in Germany, like I was, I went to Germany when I was like nineteen uh, to go hang out with a, this exchange student, and um, uh, so I ended up going to this school and hanging out. Like uh, um, one of her friends was like, "Hey, you want to go to school with me and talk to these, uh, ki- you know, go to this English class, right? And just talk to these German kids about uh, about America." So I did that like one day. I was over there for like thirty days. So these kids were like, uh, they were. I had just graduated high school, and these kids were like, I don't know, seventh, eighth, ninth grade or whatever. But it was so crazy when afterwards they're like, "Hey, do you want to go to the bar?" Right? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not going to the bar with a bunch of like fifteen, sixteen year old. It was just the weirdest thing. You know? For an American. Right, yeah. And they were like all like it was yeah. normal, you know? I mean it wasn't uh like they were just I was like uh, it was Jake, weird. did you bring the whole four pack of that? Because right, yeah, exactly. We need more of that. Afternoon. Yeah, it's been starting to dwindle. I think I got one can left. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what are we up to, Josh? Uh we're nectar of the brine. Bine. Nectar of the bine. Sorry, I put up I was thinking humble C, you know, how it's gotta be something uh Sea worthy, but this is a Moxa North Park collab, and it is a double dry hop hazy IPA. Which I uh, I'm interested in this. So we Jake and I have had this conversation about like a lot of breweries will be the, the single dry hop, mm-hmm. and they'll, they'll do a double dry hop version. And oftentimes we like the original yeah. single dry hop because you you know almost with that too too much of the dry hopping can kind of it changes the beer completely. It gets a little more resiny sometimes. You get yeah. a little... So they're right up on this. It said they, uh, we got our industrial size juicers for this double dry hopped hazy double IPA collab with our good friends at Moxa. Uh, prepare your taste buds for the flavor filled full ride, uh, or flavor filled ride full of citrus, stone fruit, tropical flavors of tangy orange, juicy peach, and drippy mango. If you didn't know any better, you'd think we put a hot combo of Strata, Nelson uh, from Freestyle, and Nectar on straight into the aforementioned industrial sized juicers. Then poof, out came the most delicious nectar. Did it, does it say what hops they used on that? It says you would think we did. Oh, think- yeah, Nelson, Sauvin, and Nectar on. I mean, that's Strata. certainly uh, super hazy, like orange oh, juice. Yeah. That's not 
looking through it all. It smells delicious. Man, it's super juicy. So I had, um, yeah, this is, that's tasty. I uh, that's definitely taste some stone fruit in there. That's a definitely a good double dry hopped. You know, I, I don't know what it tastes single, but this is like, oftentimes you get too much earthiness in the double dry hop, and this one doesn't have that. It's, it's still light and fluffy. So those, uh, you know, speaking of Moxa, so the collab with them, Derek was just down here not that long ago um, brewing this, you know, a couple weeks ago with, with Kelsey. But last night, uh, it was the um, it was the California Brewers Conference, is that what it was? The, uh, um, I think so, yeah. But they, they ended up with two uh, two gold medals and a silver, I think, Moxa did. They were, like, number three, like, brewer in the state of California. Yeah. Uh, that brewery guild. It's did. funny because you know what brewery I don't often buy anymore is abnormal. Right now that he's gone, you know it's just like you're just kind of like, eh. right. Yeah, I mean that was crazy. Well, like he's he just, up there now. He, mm-hmm. Yeah, so he starts. So okay. he was at abnormal. He was employee number one at abnormal. He was the brewer, the salesman, the, everything. Uh, the, yeah, the he whole, literally did the whole uh, except back it. Basically. Yeah, I mean, so he was everything when they started, and then. Um, when Moxa was starting off, they brought on um, Derek as their brewer, and um, I think his wife was living up in that area, um, so he he moved up there, um, or his his fiance at the time. Um, but yeah, so they're they've been around now, I think, three years. Phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, he's yep. a phenomenal brewer. The other guy, I think, I don't know where he came from, but uh, he's a phenomenal brewer yeah. as well. I, I think the the sad part is it's just in Sacramento, like. I just wish it was here because yeah, we had, uh, closer than Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's right. closer than Oklahoma. Yeah, I my my friend lives a few miles from there, so it's a little little easier to get. They they've been making some distribution drops to uh, like bottle craft occasionally, and uh, so they certainly get some beers up up this way. Well, I'm being in the state of California. If you live locally, do they have a shipping program? You can ship. Yeah, they will. They they will ship down here. Yeah, did they started their club? Haven't they? Yeah, they're. Um, yeah. I forget what they're what they're called. Uh, um, but yeah, they certainly have a. They they do have a club. Um, and they. Uh, um, yeah, no, they they put out a lot of a lot of good barrel aged beers. There. Yeah, that's why I was got, that's why I was going with that. Mm-hmm. Is that he? It's it's nice because I think at a normal he didn't really venture too much into like barrel aged and and stuff. Yeah, it was kind of you know. They they had some really like Machiavelli uh, abnormal was phenomenal yeah you know um, they they had uh, a lot of the same collaborations that he's now doing at uh, abnormal or at, at Moxa he was doing like at abnormal. abnormal like it was all his relationships yeah. you know all like those doing contacts. those yeah working yep like you know the the Moxa the or the the Mostra um, the Jay Wakefield collabs are now happening up there Vice the uh, instead of so, no, it's good. It, that's really good. I, yeah, uh, no, that's, I think, you know, as far as my favorite, I think the best beer in, in town right now might be North Park. As far as, you know, they're wet. They're the, hazies. The, yeah. They're hazies in their West Coast. I would actually agree with that. I feel like, you know, there's others that I like, but I haven't had a bad hazy or West Coast out of North Park since. And I, I said I had a hiatus in North Park. Yeah. In the last episode, but it's it's kind of gone. It's their stuff's just yeah. I I love their beers. I'm a fan. Yeah, whatever they're doing. And if you're if you're here, the North Park, the food, oh right, that they serve Master. there. Yeah, that's yeah. No, that, whoever they have in there doesn't hurt. <laughs> wow, right. some of those sandwiches are phenomenal. Short short uh, short rib sandwiches, grilled cheese, yes. carnitas. No, yeah, it's great food. Delicious. I wish they still had the. They used to do really good sausages. That was like Mastiff is still their. That's better, the food, but yeah, they don't do sausages. They don't do the anymore. sausage. They, they used, used to have a sausage plate. That's actually when I first went there. That was yes. my favorite part. Yes, yeah, <laughs> they they used to do uh, sausages uh, down at Liberty Station as well. But mm-hmm. that's gone. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna continue on with uh, the hazy, but we're gonna do we're gonna step it up a notch to a triple. This Ooh. is uh, a don't wake me up <laughs> from Green Cheek. Which after ten and a half percent or ten point two percent, you probably won't be woken up if you <laughs> did this by yourself on a consistent basis. Get ready for my nap. Yeah. So <laughs> they're they're right up on this. It's a hazy triple IPA with citrus strata and mosaic hops, right? Like two of my three favorite hops there. Three. Like 
Uh, double dry hopped with Citra, then hit with the equal part of uh, Mosaic and Strata. Uh, raw wheat and old-fashioned oats help create the base, but it's really about the hops for this one. Milky yellow in color. Ooh, flavorful hoppy layer of passion fruit, guava, and kumquat. This is a... I've had this experience with triple IPAs. Hazy's is... They're dangerous because you... They're, they're, their flavor profile is not that much different than like a, a single AZ IPA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, it actually like the the alcohol content holds the hop better, so you can actually get more hop and more juiciness in there. Yeah. Because it balances out when it comes to the 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 grain build and things like mm -hmm. that. So there's just like a about just it's the reason why you can't find a good session IPA, hazy session IPA. It's just yeah. they, they don't work because there's not enough backbone. Where this has the backbone and oh, it's that I is like that. that is orange. Gosh, juice, yeah, no, it's awesome. it certainly is like orange juice, right? Like um, another another win for Evan up at Green Cheek, <laughs> dude. Yeah, for sure. And it is like oh, you could you could feel the alcohol difference one on, on yeah. this one compared to the well, I think that was an eight and a half. On the yeah, we're at one. ten, and the Moxa was uh, was eight and a half. Yeah, definitely a little a uh, little. Boozier, I think. Yeah, but still, just too easy. No, yeah, super too, smooth. Yeah, too easy to drink at ten point two. For sure. Yeah, no, I, uh, I agree. That's got a. That's delicious. Uh, not not overly piney. Yeah, it's got it's got that sweetness on the front end. It does have a little bitterness to it in the middle, but it doesn't. You don't have that piney linger. No, right? Yeah, it like just it's soft. The mouthful is fluffy, pillow, pillowy. That's a really good triple. I've been staying away from triples recently. They can be dangerous. Yeah, for yeah. sure. You know, like the, um, a lot of times they're, that's a difficult beer. Like a 10% IPA is a difficult difficult beer to pull off, yeah. right? Without it being like, uh, make it drinkable, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I think. Uh, well, the current Enjoy by by Stone. For September 6th, 2021. It says it's an IPA, but it comes in at 9.45. And I didn't, realize that. I, didn't, I didn't realize that until I. And it's in a bottle. It, it's a 22 it, it bottle. Felt, it felt like, oh, this is, tastes great. <laughs> right. <I can't>. We <laughs> like to call that, they should call that beer nap time. Right? Yeah, yeah, you're getting sure. 22 of that. Yeah, you know? you're going to sleep. Yeah. Nights out. Yep. That's a great IPA right there. Tasty. Milky that is yellow. Really good. And color. Yeah, I would definitely. Uh, yeah, but deceiving on the taste. Oh my goodness! You just keep drinking it. Cause yeah, know. it's not yeah. not a good thing. Yeah, because I, I like if I had that whole can, I'd probably do that whole can. Yeah, Easily. Like, right. I, you know, I got absolutely. A, I had, probably wouldn't look at the well, ABV on that. You would just drink it. You go oh, triple IPA, mm -hmm. and then you drink it. And that's and why the, that's why awesome. the parrot's asleep on the the can. <laughs> <laughs> A cheeky. <laughs> the old me wouldn't understand all the fruit in the beer. Uh -huh. I, I usually had subscribed to the, the the thought of don't fruit the beer, but yet like this one, passion fruit, guava, kumquat. Those flavors. Good. The stone fruit comes through too. I which I enjoy in an IPA. Some people don't, but I enjoy the stone fruit. The the peach kind of flavor coming out a little bit. Yeah, plum. Not so much plum in this one, but there is a little bit of that nectary kind of flavoring in there. Yeah, sweet. no, that's super good. Little, I, you know, a uh, um, little boozy in the in the middle. I mean, I think you know that, uh, um, but it's a triple. A yeah. triple the ten percent there. The ten percent. Yeah, right. There. Right. Which, no, that's good. Which may make the second half of this show a little uh, <laughs> loopy. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I'm up to the task. All right, we're gonna shift gears here a little bit. So, do you guys you guys have any decent beer here? Well, let's introduce oh. this beer, and then we'll talk yeah. about uh, any any beers we've had. Uh, I'm gonna get the name of this wrong. It's a triple dry hop West Coast IPA. Oh, double IPA. Chris, why why did you do this? This is awesome. Yeah, no, so I this, didn't even read that before we started. So this is a triple dry hop West Coast double IPA with Citra Incognito. Uh, Centennial, Amarillo, Citra Hop, Simcoe, Mosaic, and Strata. I'm not sharing. Yeah. 
No, it's Holy um, cow. Yeah, it's super, citrus. That's so my favorite. if I it it just wow. says the name of it is NPBC five. Is this their this uh, anniversary, anniversary beer? beer? Yes, yeah, so North Park coming up on their fifth anniversary. They did this, and then they did a hazy triple IPA. No oh, man. All right, it worked. I uh, I went the route of the West Coast because I uh, happened to be a fan. Yep. You know, the, I uh, I'm I taken only because production wise, breweries haven't been cranking out West Coast. Like mm-hmm. you had your stable West Coast IPAs, but not. And it, it just for lack of better, like not small batch I, West Coast IPAs. I mean, yeah, I, a couple have started to come out. A couple I've seen a couple. A com, couple of breweries are going back to and making a production West Coast IPA. Like, I think a lot of them like stepped away from it for a little while. You know, you still had your like uh, Sculpins and uh, um, Stone had their IPA, which is still good, tasty, but. You know, a couple of breweries have started to come back and like making a readily available West Coast IPA. I think Modern Times came out with Dungeon Map. Oh yeah, that's their, their new, new, their right, new their West Coast, Coast right. IPA. Just like something that's really on tap, and that is so it's a it's slightly hazy, but yeah, may, not, not maybe see through. But I, I would, mean, yeah. certainly. Uh, I mean, it's clear. It's it's, it's probably clearer than the that Pilsner was. Oh, right? totally. Yeah, yeah it, it is. Be, and it's it's got hops. It's a little like. yellow hinge. So you, I mean, this may be a two row only. They're just using two row uh, malt on that or barley on that, and not there may be no adjunct barley in there at all. And so maybe not filtered, filtered, but not unfiltered. Well, do you guys find that you float from style to style and that it changes? I know Charlie is yes forever. When I first started drinking beer with Charlie. Decades ago, yeah, we were. He was. He was the stout. He guy. was the he stout porters, the, yep, the dark beers, anything right? Dark, and then he's like, he wouldn't "You guys are it. uncultured." When we talked about how much we like West Coast IPAs, <laughs> he's like, "You guys, it's because you guys are uncultured." He yeah. was the first guy I knew had a kegerator. Yeah, so he. Um, <laughs> but now he's like the hazy IPA guy, right? Like in Chris people, yeah. it's like he's not a fan of the West Coast IPAs. I still like. I mean, I think for a long time I, I went away from like West Coast IPAs, but recently, like. It's probably been like uh, Pilsners for me, but I love a good West Coast IPA. And like, like just that hop aroma. Dude, I'll tell you what. This is, so this, is <laughs> this is delicious. Right. Yeah. This is like afternoon, summertime drinking right here. This is like quintessential like San Diego weather drinker. It's this? yeah, it's just super like clean, crisp. You have that hoppy like the orange. You can taste mm. some orange. Like, I think tangerine in there there's a little ty- a hint of pineiness in there which is what you like it gives you that bitterness mm-hmm. um it's a return to basics yeah. a lot of it with this the west the west, the west coast. coast it's you go out there and oh we're adding notes so now we're, we're hazy and then right now we come back and wow i remember why i fell in love with IPAs. There's, right and, and yeah it's exactly. the west coast particular yep that really that was the you know the you, you had mentioned Sculpin earlier, but that was the first beer, like, prior to, like, Sculpin, I think, like, um, like my, my introduction to craft brewery is, like, a buddy of mine's, uh, um, he did a beer tour for his birthday, like, his, probably his 30th birthday at the time, and, and uh, um, uh, I think, uh, I had had Sculpin there, and, but, I, I mean, I think I fell in love with, like, Yellowtail, right? Yellowtail oh. Pale Ale, yeah. and then Cease and Desist. Right. Cease right. <laughs> and then ended up with, uh, <laughs> Uh, which is really a Kolsch, right? Calling that a pale ale is... Which is now, it's called the That's California, California Kolsch. Kolsch. Is that what it is now? Yeah, $5. and they've re... The recipe's different. Yeah, it's they've not, rebranded. I've got a... Was, it's it funny, the, the... When I was at Stone Cloud, the, the wedding that I went to, the father of the groom, or father of the bride, um, he loves the yellowtail, so I took him a case. Yeah. I found it at Bevmo. It's hard to find. And <laughs> yeah. It it was, that was great. Um, but then, you know, that Sculpin was just lights out oh, at that time. And when they came up the Grapefruit Sculpin, mm-hmm. that was like the first, like, adjunct beer I think I had, where it was like somebody added fruit. Right. Rind. And it was a mistake. It was a, yeah. Which is an interesting story. It, they had been brewing a batch of Sculpin and had messed it up. And someone close to the team said, I think we can save this. And they put the fruit in, 
and people loved it. Yeah. yeah. And so the grapefruit sculpin became the staple for Ballast Point, and it was all a mistake. Right. Yeah. And then you would, yeah, and then shortly thereafter, you'd go into Target and see it in uh, the Midwest, you know, like a row of different uh, sculptures. That, that happens when you sell out. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, yeah, they, yeah. The, those guys did all right, though. Like, oh, yeah. And it's back home. home. I don't blame right. them. I just didn't buy from them during that period of time. Right. <laughs> so, but I will say, speaking of grapefruit, this is why, this is always my, like, my, my, bar of like is it a good west coast ipa or not do i get some hints of grapefruit in there and i definitely do on this one i feel like i'm eating a grapefruit for breakfast you know it's like it's a fruit serving right that's a phenomenal beer mm. like the uh that's like like you said like it's the reason i fell in love with west coast ipas is that right there like the, the bitterness the um the stone fruit you know like the, the just the tropical like all that hop the smell the bitterness on the back end just well, drink those all day how we typically talk about, you know, what beers we've had this week, following that same trend. Uh, one of the ones I had this week that I'm, I'm loving is the Full Size Pony from Modern Times. It was a, it was a collab with Fair State from your, your home state of Minnesota. So don't, don't you know. know. Don't you know. That's right. And so, um, yeah, no, same idea. West Coast IPA, Mosaic, Centennial, Columbus, and Simcoe. Mm-hmm. Love it. I, I can't get enough, and I'm glad there's still, you can still access it Yeah, at Loma Land as well as North Park. Yep. It's one of my favorites they've done, because it is, it's a West Coast IPA, it's 6%, so it's totally, like, drinkable, and it's just, it does, it has that crispiness, it's got the, the, it's got little grapefruit hints in there, and it is just, it's, it's been one of my go-tos, I've, I, I, you know, when they released it, I got a couple of four packs, and I find myself if I go in again, and yeah. it's on the shelf, I'll take one of those. You're picking <laughs> it up. Yeah. What about you guys? What, do you, what else have you had? Uh, Miss Dragon, Humble Sea, uh, Modern Times collab, Pilsner. I I have found myself drinking more Pilsners than I care to share. Yeah. Uh, mainly because I could drink more of them. It's yeah. summer. It's They're summer crisp. time. Crisp, it's crisp. Crispies are good. What beer was it? Uh, Miss Dragon. It's oh, yeah, hum- yeah. It's a Humble Crown, Sea yeah. Modern Times collab. Yeah. They did it with Galaxy Hops. They've done it with... Uh, they did another hop with it. R- Rwanda. Ronda. Oh, uh, Rwaka. Rwaka. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Rwaka hops on it. Rwanda's yeah, Avenger. Avengers. Approved. You know, I just watched Black Panther the other day with my daughter, so that's probably why that came to... Rest uh, in peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a little sad. Um, but anyways, that would, that's that been my uh, little bit of a go-to. That's in the fridge right now, mm-hmm. drinking that. And that, uh, I not nursing it, because I'm the only one drinking it. I just don't tell people I have it, but that keg of BBR is just... It's the gift that keeps on giving. That's I love that beer. It's so yeah, light, it's crisp. On a hot day, doing your yeah. work. Hey, yeah. so the um, uh, I had um, a couple of beers that I had um, recently. I, I had a Atrial Rubricat from Jester King, which mm. was a raspberry yeah. sour. Oh, okay, it was phenomenal. Yeah, like it was so good. I've been like chasing this beer for years, not yeah. wanting to like pay the price of like what it would cost to trade for one. Mm. Um, or like didn't have anybody that would proxy for me in Austin uh-huh. and then so they're pretty rare um yeah I think it used to be a little more like mm-hmm. people used to line up like pre-COVID yeah. like it would be a giant line outside the farm for the beer right and then um now it's uh um my, my buddy had picked one up and brought it to this this meeting uh, a work meeting that I was that I attended uh um it was awesome yeah. Like it was super, super, it was everything I had hoped it would be like the, um, that's a super cool adventure. Like when we were hanging out, like with, um, there was like eight, probably eight or nine guys that were sitting around drinking beer, like three of which were into beer, right. Uh, that, that had brought beer, like one guy from Texas brought beer, actually four of us. Um, you know, and then there was like four or five people who just aren't really, they're beer drinkers, but they're not like, you know, they're not going to travel around the country and bring beer with them. Right. Um, so, like, getting to bring, like, your really good beers and introducing people to, like, craft beer, like, it was a lot of fun, you know? And the other thing I like is, like, a lot of people, like, when they try that atrial rubricate, they want nothing to do with it. So, yeah. I get to drink as much of it as I want, you know? It's <laughs> do awesome. You, do you find yourself, like, I, just for me, as a beer drinker, as a, I, 
I'm a beer snob. I I have no apologies for that. But I, one of my favorite things to do is to introduce people to beers and beer styles. Like I, one of my, you know, if I'm out with some friends that you know they drink their beers and then we end up at a brewery somewhere and they're like, I'm like, what do you? I, I'll do it to strangers. What do you typically drink? Because I'll look at the menu. I'll I'll tell you what you should start with, and then I'll tell you what you should try next. Jake probably hates it when I do that, but you know, you know, I don't know. Got it. Got your company's better than some of your idiosyncrasies. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Okay. Well, I just apologize, and I have no apologies for it. But it's it is one of my favorite things. Like you get in these groups of people, like oh, you you said three out of the eight people drink beers. Like it's great because you get to get your own. But I love introducing people to beer and styles that they maybe wouldn't try. Well, when they grab onto it, like yeah. Tech Guy Steve is a perfect <laughs> example with his sours. The Mister I don't like yeah. sours. Yeah. I don't drink sours. And right, I, I love doing the same thing with like sours. stouts. Like, and that's you know, like bringing yeah. um, like rolling oh, it with yeah, like porous whole, stouts yeah. or like some just banger modern times. Yeah. Like yeah, or any of the sl- any beer. of the slushies is like okay, right? Well, you're, you're, you can convince anybody that the, the beer is good if you're giving them like the yeah <laughs> North Forty. Well, that's, you know, that, that's what I kind of think, like, like, is, you know, like, I started when, um, I know years ago, like, I didn't really drink stouts, you probably introduced me to, like, legit stouts, but, like, when, um, like, I was, I was buying good stouts before I drank stouts, just knowing how, like, rare they were, and I'm like, if people are paying this type of money for right. these beers, they have to be pretty good, like, and if you can get the right, I, I think you can, like, like, people are like, oh, no, I don't drink stouts. Like, my buddy Brian talks about um, how I ruined him with this uh, with this horror beer that I brought up. And he's like, no, I don't drink stouts. <laughs> and then it was that Kobe Luwak, like, uh, go shock that he had made. I remember and, that episode. And he was, like, chasing that beer, you know? Yeah. So now he buys, now he's, like, like that's, like, his gold standard. So, the, like, it's awesome to, like, introduce somebody to that and be like, actually, I like stouts. I just don't like the stout, you know, like, yeah. I'm not a fan of Guinness or I'm not a fan right. of, Which of is, whatever, what I know stouts to be, right? Well, I was thinking, like, uh, bottle logic. What's the... Uh, Fundamental no, observations. observations. Unbelievable. That's right. That was, that, for you, that was, like, your first one. And I, I remember, for me, it was, I, uh, I had just, I just found out about Modern Times Loma Land at the time, the the actual uh, saison that they had was one of my. Th- that was the first beer I ever had from them, which they don't even make anymore. Modern times, if you're listening, fix that problem, uh, because it's still I love the saison style. It just it's not for everyone, and I get that, but I love that peppery, kind of farmhouse, almost warm beer feel to them. And uh, but I remember it was Monster Park. They had a Monster Park night, and I went and I had those stouts, and it like transform the way I looked at beer. Right. It was like, I, I went from like, oh, I want something I can drink all the time, West Coast IPA, to where like, I'll have five ounces of that beautiful stout you're pouring over there, and I'll be good to go for the day. Correct. Right. You know, it was, it, and it, because that, the enjoyment of that five ounces far outpaced the two or three IPAs I drank. Right. For sure. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I, I'm a fan of introducing people to to, to good beer. Yeah. Right. Try to bring some bangers to the games. So, so our last beer of the day. So our after we're, potty. Our beer. after potty. Uh, it is, I, and I, I, Evan may not agree to this, but I think this is his new, uh, variation of naughty sauce when he was over at Noble. Uh, this is new adventure. It's a, your nitri- opinion. My opinion. And that's okay. That's okay. Uh, it's a nitro golden milk stout with, uh, with coffee, which, one of my favorite styles because it's very rarely done well. Yeah. And when I find a good one that I like, I cling to it a little bit more than I probably should. Right. So they say here, uh, each can is on nitro. So you'll want to give it a light shake back and forth, crack it open, and then pour it fast down the side of your pint can. Yeah. Down my throat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So they all get my glass here. Everybody right? get your glasses ready because yeah, so it's going to be they, quick. They teamed up with their bud, Jeff Dugan of Portola Coffee, mm. uh, to bring you something that looks like a blonde ale but tastes like a coffee milk stout. Uh, Man, it's really hard to pour four glasses on right, it. And try to get that, that nitro. Uh, so, but it tastes like I, a coffee milk stout. It's full body, creamy, like a Portolo cappuccino. 
Sorry. And it hits with the, the flavors of a freshly baked chocolate chip cookie, toasted almonds, and coffee. Yep. Lots of coffee. It's uh, a... The- you can smell like a, like all, it smells yeah, like yeah. a cold right. brew coffee, yeah, like yeah, right yeah. out of the right, shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you can see really like does. coffee in the bottom, like little <laughs> floaties, like coffee <laughs> floaties in coffee there, floaties, which is awesome. But yeah, no, like that's like that. Gosh, a hair darker than like the Pilsner that we yeah, had earlier, apparently. right? Cold, like this is why I, this is one of the hard things to do. Like the I've had this I for all intents and purposes I've had this beer before, so I already have my opinion on it. But my favorite thing to do with one of these types of beers is put them in a glass you cannot see through. Mm. Yeah. Because it's, 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 it's fighting tradition, right? It's like, this shouldn't, by the look of it, it shouldn't taste the way it tastes. Yeah. Right? Like, you, you have predisposed ideas about what this, like, you look at it, and it kind of looks like a hazy, almost like a hazy amber. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. got. It's a little dark. It's got an amber tone to it when you look through the oh. middle of the glass. But when you taste it, that's not what you're drinking. So, so you're talking about putting it like in a sippy cup so you can take it places. Is that, is I was that thinking, what you're saying? I was thinking coffee cup. But yeah. Yeah. all right, it's pretty wow. wild. That isn't is it? wild. It is it's because crazy. your eyes closed. That has a stout profile. Right. No. Yeah. For sure. Right. Yeah. You wouldn't like if you walked up and looked at my glass. You wouldn't be like, I bet you that guy's drinking a stout. Outside of like the lacing around the glass, that's you know, and the, the head stacks, that's on there, right? Yeah, you have a like a nice nitro head on there, and even like the honestly, nitro, I love the nitro. Yeah, the nitro is a good touch it's to it. Super creamy. Yeah, like, that's a great. That's a great. Beer. It is uh, the one. The one. The kind of beers that I kind of like. Oh, this is what it kind of tastes like. It does have a little Guinness feel to it on yep. the mouth, mm-hmm. like when you're drinking it. It doesn't dry out like a Guinness though. Um, I think Guinness dries on the back of the tongue a little more. But it's almost like a, it's like a halfway between a Boddington cream ale, mm-hmm. right? And a because of the, the the color and things like that, and a Guinness. Like I think if you did a a half and half of Boddington and Guinness and mixed it up, yeah, this is like the flavor kind of profile you would get. Mm-hmm. I wish more breweries would use the nitro. I know, I know, um, Modern Times has kind of pulled away from some of those. They're their coffee stout on nitro was phenomenal. That used to show up in just in the variety. Monster, Monster, yeah, Monster Park nitro. It was unbelievable. It, it, so I, because I asked, uh, uh, did you have any pull over there? I, you know, I did. I talked to, I talked to Jacob at one time about it at Dankness, and they got pushback from a lot of people about doing beers on nitro because it felt they the people felt like. League members felt like it hid the adjunct flavors in the stouts when you did it on nitro. Um, I, however, if you gave me a Monster Park on nitro, bourbon barrel aged Monster Park on nitro, no adjuncts, just give that to me on nitro, right. I would be in heaven. Every time I ordered those beers, I was bummed out that I didn't get more of them. Yeah. Like those, every, every one of those. Yeah. Like the vanilla, like, or I think they did a. The, the vanilla coffee version in the cans. Unbelievable. Every, night, you're right. So every good. time. Like, I think I bought 12 of them last time. Yeah. I'm down to, I got one left in the fridge. I know exactly where it is. And I look at it every day. I'm like, do I drink this? It's today the day. It's today the day. Because I do, like, I, I want that experience when it happens. Right. Now, that's not even the nitro version. I felt like the nitro versions were way mm. better. And I was like, yeah. I was like, they, they were talking about ordering cans and why it was a problem. Like, just get a nitro sticker and do half of them in nitro and do that. You know, let us pick. Sure. Let the customer pick. Right. Put a sticker on there. Well, when Burning, come and help. When <laughs> Burning Beard, they did the Holy the Void. They, I remember when I went in real early. I think that was the first year. And Jeff set up because I, I ordered the regular. He goes, you want to try side by side the nitro. And wow. The, yeah. How different. Same beer. Yeah. Same beer. Just the same thing CO2 with the, versus... Yeah, same with the Banksy. Yeah, Banksy. Banksy, oh. Banksy is on Nitro. Though. Banksy on Nitro? I prefer the Banksy on Nitro. Yeah, I still have a... I bought a case of that. I'm the a, camera I'm a release? Yeah. Sure. And, went, and I, bought, I bought the full case. Because it's worth yeah. it. No, but it's great. It, I, I think... I, I enjoy the experimentation of Nitro. Like, I, I would... Like, they did with Banksy. Like, you could get it on Nitro and you can get it regular. Or Holy the Void. Nitro regular. Let, let the customer 
experience that. That's just, that's just me. Yeah. So guys, we uh, we had the the four beers and the after potty beer. We had the the classique from uh, um, from Street, uh, Stone Cloud. We had the Nectar of the Vine and the North Park Brewing Company fifth anniversary West Coast from from North Park. Uh, we had the the Don't Wake Me Up and the the New Adventures from uh, from Monica. What was your favorite beer? I think I'm going to go with the North Park, which was the, the which West was Coast, the West Coast the, IPA. Yeah, that's still yours. Yeah, well, I was going to say coming into this, that would not in yeah. my head. That's yeah. not going to be my favorite. It yeah. absolutely was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's you, Steve? I'm going to go with the Pilsner. Oh, yeah. It was phenomenal. Yeah, Pilsner was. I'm not, I'm not a big Pilsner runner at the moment. So yeah, that was really good. Yeah, it was like just super. I'm going to North Park. Uh, I mean, I, I had actually I. I cheated, did a little research earlier in the week, had one of those, and, and uh, when I when I stopped in to grab that nectar of the vine for for Charlie, I had to get the uh, had to get the other one. Why wouldn't you? That's yeah, it. no, it's, it's so delicious. phenomenal. I'm like, you guys had to had to had I, to get a taste on this one. No joke. I'm going there hoping to pick up a pilsner in cans, and I'll probably be picking up that four pack as well because that that was that's that is so good. No, that was great. So good. That was great. But that that class eat though. Like that's like I've been drinking a lot of pilsners and I haven't had a whole lot that are like that, you know, that are um, that good. I I think we hit on all of these. No, they yeah. were great. Yeah. That was great. It was Another good. great show. It was a great day of having beers with you guys. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers. Well, I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to subscribe to the show via your favorite podcast player app, then head over to thepodcraft.com and look for the subscribe links. You can also get all the links mentioned in this podcast, pictures of all the beers, and other good information at thepodcraft.com. The site also has links to send us email feedback and to connect with us on social media. In closing, please continue to recommend the Podcraft Beer Show to your craft beer friends and family members in your life. The more the merrier. Thank you so much for sharing your time and attention with us. For Chris and Charlie, this is Tech Guy Steve signing off for this week's The Podcraft Beer Show. Have a great rest of your day. The Podcraft Show is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020 through 2021. The show is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, then please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for informational, educational, and discussion purposes only, and compliance with fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go.